Hello everybody. Welcome to my channel. Hit the like button and subscribe if you like. And I appreciate it and it does help my channel tremendously. Thank you. I ran across this article and this one is very, to me, very interesting because I have never seen anything like this uh, in print that I've came across. But this is kind of amazing to me. And this goes, you know, at the same time. The U.S. Space Force exists. It was founded, funded, staffed, and has been operating for almost three years. It had to do something with its time. With little fanfare, the Space Force has carried out several space missions with consistent success. Most recently, it broke an impressive record when a Space Force vehicle completed the longest ever orbital flight. Here's how. Long haul flight in the era of cheap orbital excess. Properly speaking, the Space Force X-37B unmanned space plane hasn't just broken the orbital flight record, it's still breaking it. The X-37B is still in flight and fully operational, as it has been for over 900 days. Per popular science, it launched from Cape Canaveral on May 17th, that's my birthday, 2020, and has been carried out mission duties since. Now, isn't that amazing? Wow. Details on activities are scarce. The Space Force is, after all, a branch of the military. Hmm. Many specifics of the X-37B's mission, designated USA-299, are classified. One object that wasn't classified was the deployment of a Falcon SAT, SAT 8, an educational payload designed by U.S. Air Force Academy cadets, cadets for future studies in space. Via USAFA per N2YO, all in caps, the X 37B also carries two NASA experiments pertaining to orbital radiation plus a payload for testing power beaming with microwave radiation. All in all, the little X-37B has been pulling its weight for the last 900 odd days. Whatever the administrative future of the U.S. Space Force, it can chalk up at least one unqualified success. To me, that's amazing. And they've got 13 interesting facts about the International Space Station. Before the space race even properly began, experts were already making plans for orbiting space stations where people could live and work. Those goals initially took a back seat as the Soviet Union and the United States raced for a crude moon landing. One humanity had boots on the, lunar, the lunar surface, the focus shifted to establishing a more permanent human presence in space. The first proper space station, Salyut, S-A-L-Y-U-T-1, was constructed by the Soviet Union in 1971. Additional stations were launched during the rest of the Salyut program over the next 15 years. In 1986, the Soviet Union launched MIR, MAR, which, unlike the previous comparatively simple stations, was modular, allowing additions over time. This station set the stage for what would become the most impressive construction project in human history. Beginning in 1998, the Soviet Union and the United States embarked on a joint project to build a massive orbiting laboratory in low Earth orbit. 
That's amazing. With the joining of the first two modules, Zara, Z-A-R-Y-A, and Unity, the International Space Station was born. Its creation was allowed a constant human presence in space for more than 20 years and provided a base of operations for experimentation in microgravity and the study of space flight's impact on the human body. The ISS is laying the groundwork for future long-term missions to Mars and beyond while remaining the single coolest thing we've ever built. Here's why. It travels really fast. The ISS isn't the fastest thing humans have ever built. That honor goes to the Parker Solar Probe, which travels around the Sun and Venus at 430,000 miles per hour. Whoa, that is amazing. Still, the International Space Station orbits at an incredible rate. Wow. The station orbits the Earth at about 17,500 miles per hour. At that speed, astronauts on board circle the Earth once every 90 minutes, experiencing a sunrise and a sunset 16 times in every 24-hour period. Unimaginable. Isn't that something? While the astronauts and cosmonauts may not feel while they're at work on the station, this means they're crossing five miles of space, Terran, every single second. Terrain, every single second. That's approximately 23 times the speed of sound. Wow. For context, the distance from the Earth to the moon is roughly 238,900 miles. Apollo 11 astronauts took roughly three days to get there in 1969. But at the rate the space station is traveling, it could get to the moon and back to Earth in just about a day. Wow. Probably, or people <laughs> on the space station experience time more slowly. You know, <laughs> really. Relatively tells us that the faster we're moving, the slower we experience time. Over the course of our ordinary lives, we don't travel at rates that change our subjective experience of time in a substantial way. But things are different when you're moving really fast. As we approach the speed of light, if we ever figure out how to do that, the change in subjective time would make a real difference. I guess so. Despite its speed, the International Space Station is still moving relatively slowly compared to the incredible 186,000 miles per second that light travels. Still, the ISS is moving quickly enough to measure the effects of time dilation on its inhabitants. An astronaut or cosmonaut who lives a year on the space station will experience roughly 100 of a second less than those of us on the surface of the earth. It's not much, but it still means the people on the station are, compared to the rest of us, very slowly time traveling into the future. It was built by five space agencies and 15 total countries. Space exploration often feels like a competition between various nations, but the internal space station challenges that attitude. Space is, by definition, a domain that exists without borders, and it represents an opportunity for the global community to operate in concert rather than in opposition. When the station was first being built, the United States and Russia were the only two partner nations. But in the intervening years, more nations and organizations have joined the party. Today, the International Space Station has been built and crewed by NASA. Russia's, cos Ru uh, 
Roscosmos, the Canadian Space Agency, CSA, the, J the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, J -A -X -A, and the European Space Agency, ESA, which is compromised of 11 countries. Crew space on the ISS is allocated based on the relative contribution of each nation or organization to the whole. To date, the station has seen crew and visitors from 18 countries, including each of the member nations and a few others. The station stands as a continuing symbol of what's possible when humanity works together without borders and across political ideologies. The legal status on the station is complicated. Wow. Boy, I should say so. The law of the land, so to speak, on the ISS is the International Space Station Intergovernmental Aid Agreement, IGA. Intergovernmental Agreement, IGA, which was signed in January of 1998 because the station is jointly owned and operated by various government entities, the legalities on board the ship get a little wild. The agreement lays out ownership and jurisdiction of the station's various components. In the simplest terms, the member stations are able to ex extend their legal jurisdiction to the portions of the station, modulars or equipment, which they provided, as well as to the crew member they send. That means it's possible an astronaut might be subject to the laws of the United States in one room, those of Japan, Russia, Canada, or Europe in the next. This could result in a tangled web of expectations for people to navigate <coughs> excuse me, on the station, but things are simplified by an inner party waiver of liability. The agreement essentially states none of the member nations will hold any of the other partners liable for incidents or damage as a result of normal station activities. Additionally, any claims which do arise are handled under government among the partner nations. Luckily, space travelers tend to avoid committing crimes while off-planet. When crimes do occur, as was the case in 2019, when an astronaut allegedly illegally accessed their partner's bank account from the station, the IGA provided a framework of how to address them. The station has hosted more than 250 astronauts. Boy, I must have missed out on a lot of news. Wow. At any given time, the space station typically had a crew of seven people aboard the ISS. There are times, particularly during crew changeovers, which up to 13 crew members might temporarily be aboard, but those times are few and short-lived. Because of the station has been continuously inhabited for more than two decades, many people have come and gone. As of February 2022, 251 people have visited the station, hailing from 19 countries. As previously stated, crew assignments are based largely on a country's contribution to the station cons 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 oh, now wait a minute. <laughs> Consequently, a majority of the station's crew, 155 astronauts, have come from the United States. Wow, I missed out on a lot of stuff, didn't I? <laughs> any any of you missed out on all this? Let me know. Leave me a comment. A further 52 were Russian cosmonauts, 11 were Japanese astronauts, 8 were astronauts from Canada, including Chris Hanfield, who commanded the station, and 5 or fewer came from various members of the European Space Agency or visiting nations. At current, the record of most visits to the nation, to the station, is jointly held by Y-U-R-I, Uri, 
Melanchinko, Melanchinko and Fyodor, F-Y-O-D-O-R, Yurchimankin, and that's Y-U-R-C-H-I-K-H-I-N, Fyodor Yurchimankin, both of whom have traveled to the ISS five times. The ISS has a robot crew member, a robot crew member, isn't that something? The ISS wouldn't be a proper spaceship if it didn't have, if it didn't also have a robot crew member. In an effort to make good on our fantasies of robot space companions, like Lieutenant Commander Data, and the sim simply named robot from Lost in Space, Scientists at NASA's Johnson Space Center, JSC, crafted Robonaut 2 as a first synthetic member of the station's crew, commonly called R2, which gives us Luke Skywalker vibes. <laughs> Robonaut has lived aboard the ISS since 2012. R2 has vision symptoms, sensors, and hands that are nearly identical to that of humans of dexterity. The robot is capable of completing repetitive, repetitive or dangerous tasks on behalf of the crew, freeing them up to do critical work or preventing them from encountering potential harm. However, Robonaut 2 is mostly used in station as a testbed for future robotic activities on long-term space missions. What the crew learns about Robo Robonauts' abilities could lead to even more advanced robots assisting astronauts on Mars missions. In cooling solar rays, the station is roughly the size of a football field. The International Space Station is the largest spacecraft ever constructed by a pretty wide margarine, margin. Margin. If we were to lay it on the ground, the ISS would stretch across an entire football field side to side and to end. At 357 feet in length and a weight of nearly 1 million pounds, the station provides plenty of room for the crew to move around, complete their objecti objectives. With its beam modular expanded, the ISS has a massive internal space measuring 32,898 cubic feet through most of it used for the storage of equipment. Despite that, there are still plenty of amenities for the crew to enjoy. The station has sleeping quarters, bathrooms, and a gym, which astronauts use for two hours each day to, in order to uh, stave off bone and muscle loss. Its best feature, however, is a cupola, or cupola, C-U-P-O-L-A, cupola, that allows astronauts to gaze out the window at the Earth below. As big as it is, the station might soon get bigger. There are plans to add three additional modulars to the station in the coming years, potentially getting us one step closer to a city of a thousand planets. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? It allowed an astronaut to live in space for almost two years. My goodness. Huh. One of the major objectives of the International Space Station is understanding the impact of long stays in space on the human body. As this knowledge is key to our ability to travel to more distant locales like Mars. To that end, it's not uncommon for people to live on the station for months at a time. When it comes to American astronauts, however, no one has spent more time in space than Peggy Whitson. Over the course of her career, she spent 665 days, 22 hours, 22 minutes off planet, only a couple months shy of two years. Whitson retired from NASA in 2018, which might have ended her time in space. However, 
she slated to return to the ISS aboard one of SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft as commander of AXIOM Axiom Mission 2. Axiom Mission 2. It will be her fourth flight. Other notable long-term missions include NASA's Twins Study, during which Scott Kelly spent a year aboard the ISS while his brother Mark, himself also an astronaut, stayed on Earth. The study sought to establish the impact of a year in space on the human body by using an identical twin as a control. Wow! It took 10 years and a dozen of missions to complete. And by the way, there's pictures galore on here. I wished I could just put them all up. But there's, there's so many pictures. And um, this is, uh, you might want to write this. If you'd like to go here and see these pictures, they're amazing. It's a very long article. But, oh my goodness. But this is called Slash Gear. And that's S-L-A-S-H Gear. G-E-A-R. And it's got several headings on it. Uh, for each set that I've been going through here. Um, and it's like 13 interesting facts about the inner space or inner something right there. I, I'm not sure what that one is. But, uh, oh... If you're interested, I'll see if I can't get a better uh, thing. Um, now, I understand that you cannot, uh, on YouTube, and remember I'm new, I'm just going on three months now, uh, you can't put a, a link in your video. You can share. Now, see, I'm confused with that. If you can share, why can't you put the link in? That don't make sense to me. It really don't. But anyway, let's finish this one up. I'm going on a half hour here. But this is so interesting. President Reagan signed off on the creation of the space station in January of 1984 with the goal of getting stated, uh, started within the next 10 years. But that timeline wasn't ultimately met. The station did eventually get built. The first segment, the Zara control modular module, uh, was launched in in November of 1998 by Roscosmos and would be met in the orbit by NASA's utility module only two weeks later. Additional modules and supply deliveries were completed over the next decade before the station was completed. In total, more than 30 missions were needed to deliver modules, complete the repairs stocked the station with supplies. Many of those missions were completed using the various space shuttles. In fact, that's why the shuttle program was maintained for so long. Construction of the station was completed 2009, at which point it became fully operational just in time for the 10th anniversary of continuous occupation. Astronauts have to drink recycled urine. Ooh. I didn't know that was coming up. But when you, when you're in space, you have to take you have to take something you're going to need with you. That means astronauts need frequent food and water deliveries in addition to scientific instruments, experiments and other necessities. Launching supplies to the station is expensive sometimes costing tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars per kilogram of mass. NASA and other space agencies, therefore, do whatever they can to limit the weight of payloads, ultimately reducing fuel costs. One effective way to do this involves reducing the amount of water that needs to be shipped to the station. The ISS accomplishes this by using a water recovery system that takes in urine from both humans and lab animals. Oh, dear Jesus as well as consideration in the air and recycles it into drinkable water. Well, it's filtered and purified. <clears throat> the poor lab animals, God love them. It might not sound appetizing, but essentially the same thing that happens on Earth, only on a smaller scale. 
To date, recovery of water on the station sits at about 93.5%, but scientists are aiming at 98%. Reaching for the milestone will help pave the way for future missions to Mars, uh, where resupply will be more difficult, if not impossible. A new recovery system component was delivered to the ISS 2021 as part of the effort. The ISS can't see you, but you can see it. Huh. Well, you know how we buy our bottled water because of the fertilizer and, and uh, waste from the animals that go down into our ground, you know. So, what's not saying that when we drink our tap water and it's being purified by our water supply companies, but a lot of people just go grab a glass when they're thirsty in the summertime Grab that tap water and just take a big swig of it. What's saying that you're not drinking what you don't think you want to drink? You know? Astronauts abroad the station can see a lot through the cupola, including large... That must be like a telescope, I would think, wouldn't you? Cupola? 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 Including large features, which are clearly visible. However, it's not possible to perceive individual people from roughly 250 miles up. Seeing the nation with the naked eye is a lot easier. Okay, now this goes on and on, and I'm going to quit because I'm 26 minutes, 37 seconds here. So, but oh, there's just, but this is amazing. I was astounded when I come up on it, and I just thought, wow. You know, and it just, it's very, very long. But, uh, I want to uh, do one thing here before I sign off. I'm going to scroll back up here. I want the picture of the lady astronaut. And there's all kinds, like I said, pictures. There she is. Let's see if I can save this without messing anything up here. Because I will put this on as a thumbnail. I just hope I can keep it. Now, maybe I can't. Oh, it already exists. How can it already exist? I don't have it. Well, it says I do. Huh. I'll be darned. Well, people, I'm going to uh, get this posted. And, um, but this was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Now, you might be able to get this, but I don't think so. I don't know. Okay. Um, I'll be back. And God bless you. Okay. I'll be back in a few.